money on the project, and they don't seem to care really what effect it has. They're not trying to experiment to see if humans can survive it or anything like that. They just want to get this stuff up. And then we discover, as we're going further down the line, that there are companies generating a uh, genetically modified organisms, or seeds, uh, modified seed crops that are they're being engineered to resist the aluminum in the soil. And a lot of crops won't grow in that, and so now, after they've messed up the soil, all the farmers are going to have to go back and uh, buy seeds that have been yeah. genetically engineered to resist the aluminum that have been put into the soil, and all of a sudden, uh, mankind is completely dependent upon these uh, companies like Monsanto and other giant uh, agricultural firms. You can't even grow natural seeds anymore. And we're looking at that. It, it's, a, it's a shocking thing. I hope, I hope we don't find that that's true. But all the arrows right now are pointing in that direction. We get into cost-benefit analysis here because there's also HARP could be involved in this. Geoengineering, as you guys mentioned, which is documented heavily in Dennis Kucinich's uh, bill that is the Space Preservation Act, uh, which, by the way, I don't think got through Congress. And then Kay Bailout, as we call her here, Kay Bailey Hutchinson, uh, also put together some legislation in order to qualify geoengineering, which, again, is supposed to save us all from global warming. But it is cost-benefit analysis because they can benefit on so many different levels. Ed, that's how they do everything, isn't it? That's right. And, you know, there's an old adage, if you just follow the dollar, follow the buck, you usually you get to the source of the problem. And it looks to me like there's a tremendous, uh, tremendously profitable industry uh, being built up right now uh, around this concept of geoengineering or weather modification or reducing global warming and all of these other things that can be sold fairly easily to an unsuspecting public. They all say, oh, well, that's good. We, we don't want global warming, you know. And so they put up with this and they don't question, they don't criticize. But behind the scenes, you see a whole industry being built up, which is, uh, as they say, tremendously profitable. And the the money for all of that is coming uh, from the taxpayers. And uh, it, it's a scam is basically what it is. We're just focusing on the one area that is real easy to prove. There's no speculation in the, in the area that we're going into. They definitely are uh, doing this geoengineering. They definitely are talking about it. They've, they're working up formulas for it. They're putting together strategies for it. They've got funding for it. Everything is in place. We don't even have to go into those other areas to make the case. Um, okay, let them, let them believe that, but at least they must understand that there's no question that they're talking about it and planning to do it. And so shouldn't they be equally alarmed about what they're going to do? If it can be shown that barium and aluminum and some of these other toxic metals are very destructive to the planet and destructive to human health, isn't that enough? You know, how many, how many issues do we need to crank into this? And so, <laughs> you know, if you're going to kill the planet and kill the population, do we need any other reason to be alarmed? What in the world are they spraying? Thank God people are asking this question. That's all we want. We just want to be able to ask these questions. Uh, our good friend G. Edward Griffin, all these years, Mike Murphy and Paul Wittenberg are doing this great effort with your help. This is a community effort to get people real information. What in the world are they spraying? Um, any final quick comments before we're out of time? And my only final thought is that we ask the question, what in the world are they spraying? And we now know what it is. And folks, you're not going to like it. Hey. I'm Peter Vreke. I'm from Belgium. I'm uh, 54 years old. I can't believe it myself. I'm uh, a very happy and grateful person. We are doing the job. Yes, yes, we're fighting for. I was in the council for about 25 years and also a period as the mayor. So from that moment on, 10 years ago, everything started to change. I start to get a picture of what is really going on. And it became crystal clear to me that we, humankind, have been uh, manipulated 
and dominated and uh, exploited for centuries. So, and this uh, country of phenomenon made me angry because I was so helpless. You can uh, decide what food you're gonna eat, what you're gonna smoke, uh, what uh, water you're gonna drink, what kind of life you're gonna lead, but not uh, with this phenomenon. Then you are just a victim. It's only a game. And there have to be good guys, and there have to be bad guys. And luckily, we are in the position to uh, be able to play the role of the good guy who has the chance and the opportunity to uh, overcome. Three days that we shared with them, my heart just, just dropped because it was such a beautiful way to live and such a peaceful way to live. I left thinking, what, what's this going to be like in 10 years? Are, are, is, is everything going to be killed off on the property? And, and if it is, what's, how are they going to get their food source? Are they going to have to take, take a class you know, and get certified by company XYZ? And what are the requirements for that? And that really is the end of freedom. I'm concerned about that. I definitely, uh, I really am. Yeah. I learned to say everything is now as it has to be now. And everything is going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Yes. I have this uh, deep feeling that in the end we will prevail because we have the right on our side. The cosmos is helping us. And I have, I have this uh, strong feeling that we are being supported by entities and by forces we can't even imagine. Here for the first time we have this scientific uh, proof that we are being spread. We are being spread and it's incredible and it's hard to believe, but we are being spread. I think at this moment to stop is not an option. Once you know it and once you have a tool like this and an opportunity like this, that the issue of chemtrails or persistent jet contrails or whatever name you use for it, that this um, uh, phenomenon is recognized as being real, publicly debated on. In the context of geoengineering, I think it's high noon to bring this to the public. This is what the sky is supposed to look like. These are old paintings. We forgot this. I'm afraid. In the years that I have been a medical research journalist, I have looked at many, many things, and I found the same three issues in whatever I'm looking at. And that is that we are being dumbed down, we are being made sicker, and we are being made infertile citizens gathered from around the world in Belgium for the first International Chemtrail Symposium. The event attracted leading professionals, politicians, and activists who discussed the health, environmental, and social implications of these programs. Today it's only going to be about facts, documents, figures, patents, licenses, everything that brings us to the truth. We have no other weapon against this vast complex than exposing and bringing their dark works in the light of the truth. We have the hope that by our efforts, more and more people will become aware of the fact that we are deceived by our leaders. So today, we, as a family, join forces with the people who publicly made known to the world that chemtrails are not a conspiracy theory, but a conspiracy fact from the Technische Universiteit Delft in the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Koen Vermeer. Well, I'm uh, Koen Vermeer. I'm a university professor of Delft University of, of Technology. Usually people are with their heads to the ground in their own two-dimensional space and they don't look up. But if you do, you see more and more space like this. And it, it, it worried me too. I, I have no explanations to our students about these phenomena. And then I studied it myself and I 
found out that I couldn't give them the answers they wanted because I think that the phenomenon is not natural. It's not natural what is happening and the explanations that are given to us uh, are not enough for me. If you look at them from a scientific point of view, the first thing a scientist does is trying to explain something. Because I'm smart and my students are not as smart yet, so I have to give them answers to questions. But if you ask most scientists honestly, they cannot answer all your questions. If people are using uh, climate control all over our heads, I want to know about it. I want to know the consequences, I want to know the health impact, I want to know everything. I need, as a teacher in my university, to give answers to my uh, students. And they have good questions. And I don't have the answers. And I want to know. Excellent. And we should discuss this. Ladies and gentlemen, for, for here you in the auditorium and for all over the world, Michael Murphy. Well, thank you very much. It's definitely an honor to be here in Belgium. The, the people who are in power control everything. They control the markets, they control us. Now they're even controlling the weather. And they can use that for warfare applications. The one thing that they cannot control is what God had originally made, and that's natural organic seeds. This is called the Hegelian dialect. It's called problem, reaction, solution. The problem here is massive amounts of aluminum, things starting to die. The solution is company X that says, hey man, you're not getting yields on, on your crop. Everything's dying, but I got the solution. I got a seed that will grow in this environment. The only problem is now you have to start buying from me. We're a little concerned that maybe part of this agenda could be to kill off anything that's natural and organic and re-engineer it with aluminum resistant GMO seeds. Uh, many may know we just got back from a week of filming in Hawaii and uh, it was an incredible trip. A big concern for the people there is they're beginning to see softening of the coconut trees. But their concern is that these programs may again be part of a, uh, of a broader agenda to destroy anything that's natural and organic so that the corporate redesigned GMO foods might be the only thing uh, only source of food for people. I didn't anticipate so many people, um, young and old, who are interested in, uh, in this phenomenon and are concerned about it. And I especially liked the, the address that the young girl gave uh, yes. today, uh, only 17 and already making an address to the, to the audience that is, well, incredible. My name is Sophia Xenilis, I am 17 years old. It is quite scary to know that the air we breathe is not what it's supposed to be. That the food we eat and the water we drink contain traces of those substances which are sprayed out over all of us as though we were being poisoned like insects. The feeling that this is causing me are feelings of deep anger and rage. I don't want to be poisoned. I don't want to have be infected with cancer. And I'm just so angry that this global poisoning can be going on, on such a massive scale, and not enough is being done to stop this crime. A clear answer to one question. Are we being spread? Have we been spread? And is it their intention to spray again and again 